Okay, so you guys ready? Let's do some more testing. Today I'm super excited to be showing you a new product from Laticrete that's a waterproofing membrane, but it's cementitious. It's like the Artex 8 plus 9, which you see me use 8 plus 9 over my Curdy on all my showers. So that's a two component mix. You got the Artex 8 and then you have the 9 and you mix the two together and you get your waterproof membrane. With the Laticrete, it's single component, meaning it's a powder, and then you just mix it with water, and then it's supposed to do basically the same thing. So I'm gonna test the two side by side and see how they perform. Okay, so what I got here is my handy dandy glass box that I use for testing. I've done some other testing, but I stripped it all down, got it ready for this new test, and what I did is I coated it with a rapid set thin set. So this is Mape Ultra Flex RS that I've taken and I've coated the whole bottom and sides of the glass box. So that's gonna do one of two things. It's going to not only provide a good surface for these membranes to stick to, but it's also gonna give me an indicator if there's a leak when I do the flood test that it'll actually show up something because thin set, when it gets wet, it turns darker. These membranes, since they're waterproof as is, they wouldn't show any darkening when they get wet. So I had to put some thin set down. So that's what I've done here. I really like the Mop 8 Ultra Flex RS for speed set. That's just a side note. If you're looking for a good fast setting thin set, it's my favorite, it's got a long working time, it's got a good open time, and then when it kicks, it kicks. It gets really hard, really fast once it reaches that point. You don't sit around waiting for it, but you also have a lot of time to work with it. So it's my favorite if you're looking for a good rapid set, Mape Ultra Flex RS. Okay, so you've seen me use the Artex 8 Plus 9. I really like the Artex 8 Plus 9. It's the best roll-on waterproofing that I've found. There's a couple things that I really like about it. For one, it has a chemical reaction. So you're mixing two parts, you're mixing the eight and the nine, and once you mix those two parts, it creates a chemical reaction, which makes it cure. You're not relying on air or moisture in the air to cure it. So it can be completely sealed under something and still cure. If you were to put it into a bucket, put a lid on it, it would still cure, which is different than say a hydro ban or a red guard or the other ones, if you put a lid back on the bucket, right, it stays wet. Well, the problem with that is if you do a shower pan and you get it on too thick and the crust dries, basically that's sealing wet membrane underneath it and it'll never cure. You go to flood test it and then all of a sudden all of the liquid re-emulsifies and that's where you run into issues. So that's why I like the A plus nine. I've also found that you can put it on thicker without it cracking. You've seen my Red Guard video probably, and I'll put that link up right here. If you put Red Guard on too thick, it wants to crack, especially in the corners. I have not had that happen at all with Artex 8 plus nine, no matter how thick I've put it on there. I really like the eight plus nine, but it's two components. You gotta mix the eight and the nine together. With the Hydro Band, what was attractive to me and why I was so excited when it came out is that you only have to mix it with water. So that means you're not lugging two components around. A lot of the times we end up with too much eight, which is the liquid, and we use up all the powder. So sometimes we have like half a jug of the eight left over and no nine to go into it. Then you can buy them separately, but for the most part, we buy them in the little kits that come together. So if this Laticrete Hydroband Cementitious works the same as the Artex 8 Plus 9, I can imagine myself using it a lot. But before I do that, and as you know, before I use any products in someone's home, I'm gonna test them and I'm gonna share it with you so you guys can see how it actually works. What I'm looking for in the comparison is, for one, the ease of installation. How is it to mix? How is it to apply? What's the drying time on it? Also, I'm looking for any variables that would cause issues out in the field. And then ultimately, I'm gonna flood test it and make sure that it doesn't leak. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the Hydroban Cementitious. So I measured out the correct quantities. So right off the bat, when you're mixing water in a single component, you have to be exact with the ratios, okay? Because you're mixing water in. It's not like the eight plus nine, where you're mixing uh, two components that are reacting, you're, you're just mixing water into it. So if you mix it too wet, it can affect it a lot more than if you're mixing the eight plus the nine. So I got the ratios exactly perfect as it says on the bag. So basically the ratios go as this. For every one cup of water, you mix in one pound, 14 ounces of powder. Now I broke that down from the ratios of mixing a whole bag, 30 pound bag with four quarts of water that's the correct ratio. If you break it down to one cup, you guys can do the math. 
I wish we switched over the metric system. This would be so much easier. Bottom line, long story short, one pound, 14 ounces of powder and one cup of water. So I'm gonna mix these two together. Okay, so you can see here it's a pretty loose, paintable consistency, real similar to how we get the Art X8 Plus 9. So to use it, I'm going to just dump it in. I'm going to use this side right here, and I'm going to dump some out. We're looking for 40 mil thickness on two coats. So you can either use a roller, and you notice when, when I use a roller, I like to pin the roller so it doesn't twist, so it's more like a big brush. So I still have some lumps in here that I need to work out, but I'm doing that right now. I've noticed that when you when the roller rolls, it takes a lot more material off and leaves it on the roller. When you push it, it leaves the right amount of material on the surface. So it feels like it just feels kind of like real gummy thin set. That's what it feels like to me. So I'm going to switch over to a brush. It might be a little bit easier to get on there. I notice it's not as sticky or rubbery feeling as the 8 plus 9. It feels a little more watery, kind of a looser consistency. So one of the things you need to watch out for is getting it too thick in the corners. Like if this was a Red Guard or a Hydro Band, if it gets too thick, it'll want to crack. So I'm being careful not to get it too thick on the first coat. So one thing I'm noticing with the Hydroband Cementitious is I'm getting uh, more air bubbles than I usually see with Art X8 Plus 9. So you can see the, the little air bubbles that are popping up. And I brushed over the air bubbles. I took my time and I was trying to cover those up and they kind of keep popping up. Again, that's not something I normally see with 8 Plus 9. So that's just a note. See there's, uh, you can see those little air bubbles that are popping up. Okay, so I got the Hydroband Cementitious first coat on. In the meantime, I'm gonna put the Art X8 Plus 9 on this side. So one thing right off the bat is that you don't have to be as exact with the ratios. Yeah, you can zoom in on this. Eight. This is probably a little thicker than we usually have it. Wouldn't you say, Devin? Yeah. That's a little bit thicker, huh? I mix it up pretty thin. Yeah. So I can tell right away that the, the 8 plus 9 is, is gummier. It doesn't feel as, as watery. It kind of wants to stay where the brush puts it. Whereas, um, the Hydroband Cementitious just felt like really, really wet thin set. It was a little bit harder to apply and get where I wanted it. Again, this is, the, the 8 plus 9 is relying on a chemical reaction. So I don't have to worry as much about it, um, the thickness. But it really wants to stay put, like I'm just putting it on there and it goes on much faster. There's also no air bubbles in it. And it goes on thicker too. I mean, it's like, it just has um, stickier properties. 
kind of like using um, Red Guard or Hydro Band, regular Hydro Band. It has it has body to it. Okay, so side by side comparison of the application of the A plus nine compared to the Hydro Band cementitious. The A plus nine went on a lot easier. It seemed to cover a lot more with each brush stroke. It wanted to stick and stay in place where I put it. The cementitious was a little more watery and I kind of had to push it and leave it in places. If I went back over with the brush, it wanted to drag that material where the A plus nine kind of wanted to just stay put. Um, that's, that's just something I noticed when applying it. The eight plus nine also has some of these little bubbles that showed up in it. And that's probably from the thin set being so porous as same with the hydroband cementitions. There's not as many little bubbles because I usually use eight plus nine over curdy, which isn't porous. So it usually there's, I usually don't get any bubbles with it, but right onto the thin set, I have some little bubbles in the eight plus nine, but I would say there's more so a lot more bubbles in the hydroband cementitious. So we're going to let this set up. Hydro band says you need to wait two hours in between coats, whereas the 8 plus 9, you only need 45 minutes between coats. So we're going to see how these two set up, and then I'm going to put one more coat on each one. Okay, so I took a lunch, came back, and both of the membranes have dried really well. It's been about an hour, and they both feel dry to the touch. So I think they're ready for their second coat. They both dried about the same time. The Ardex 8 plus 9 went on thicker than the Hydroband Cementitious, and I think the 8 plus 9 dried a little bit faster. Uh, one thing I did notice after the first coat is that the Hydroband Cementitious had some cracking already at where the wall and the floor met. There's a little bit of cracking, just really slight cracking. The 8 plus 9 has no cracking whatsoever, and the Hydroband Cementitious also has a lot of pretty good sized bubbles that formed where the eight plus nine has some small bubbles but it's it's not nearly what showed up in the hydroband cementitious so i'm going to go ahead and mix up another batch of hydroband cementitious and put its second coat on So you can see right here, it's it's just gooping down. I gotta try to get that material out without leaving air bubbles. Okay, so I got the second coat of eight plus nine ready to go. I mix this one up a little bit looser. Because really, I got, I have plenty of thickness on the initial coat. It's just filling in any of these little air bubbles. Okay, so both, <clears throat> okay, so my two coats on each one are dry. I have the Art X8 plus nine, nice and dry. It's all the dark color. Same thing with the Hydroband Cementitious. And also what I've noticed is the cracking showed up again, and maybe I put it on a little too thick, uh, but uh, it cracked in all of the corners. I have hairline cracks going all the way through it. So that did not happen with the Art X8 Plus 9, even though I put it on thicker. It wants to hold up a little bit better, whereas the Hydroband Cementitious is runnier. It wants to flow. When it gets into the corners, it, it kind of pulled up, and I think that's what caused the cracking. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and fill it up with water, and let's see what happens. So I got the water in here and I'm going to let this sit for 24 hours. I should be able to tell within 24 hours if this is leaking because I have the glass box 
And unlike my Curdy and the Ardex felt tests that I've done, I don't need to wait for the thin set to absorb under the bands to show up in a leak. I should be able to see the thin set get wet pretty much right away. So I'm just gonna let this sit for 24 hours. So we're gonna let it soak. I'll check back with you guys tomorrow. Okay, so I was just locking up for the night and this water's been sitting in here for about 15 minutes and I'm already starting to see some little specks of water show up. I wanted to film this before I left, but surprisingly to me, most of them are showing up on the RX8 Plus 9 side. So I just have these little specks here and there that are already starting to show up. Okay, so I'm back, it's, it's the morning. So this has been sitting, so that's about a 16 hour soak. And what's really surprising to me, and I noted it yesterday before I left, I started seeing some water spots come through on the 8 plus 9 side. Counted a lot more spots where the water came through on the Ardex 8 plus 9 side, and hardly any on the Hydroband Cementitious, which is totally different than what I thought, because I could visibly see pinholes. The Hydroband Cementitious, I couldn't see any holes at all in the Ardex 8 plus 9, no cracking. I couldn't see any place where water would get in in the Ardex 8 plus 9. Okay, so this is the bottom of the box. Okay, so I drained it and I've inspected it and I cannot see any pinholes in the RX8 Plus 9. I mean, I've looked in close, I've put a light on it. I have no idea how the water got through on the spots with the 8 Plus 9. There's visible cracks in the Hydroband Cementitious, but I guess the two coats, but for whatever reason, it didn't come through. I mean, a couple little spots, but there's probably I think I counted about 50 spots of water in the 8 plus 9, and I have three or four in the Hydroband Cementitious. So, totally different than what I thought the results of this test were going to be. I thought it was going to be the complete flip flop. We use a lot of Ardex 8 plus 9. I still like the product, but you can see why I like using the two methods. I like using the Curdy membrane, the sheet membrane because there's no risk of bubbles or cracking or anything in the membrane. I mean, it's waterproof membrane. I just like to go over all the seams because the thin set is the weak point of the installation. So uh, I'm gonna continue to use that method. It's basically the best of both worlds. I have a sheet membrane that's completely waterproof and then all of the seams are gone over with another waterproofing membrane. So I'm going to keep doing that, but yeah, so this test was completely different than what I thought it was going to be. So I get asked a lot of times, why don't you use RedGuard or HydroBand to actually do the seams? And I'll show you why we don't do that. So 8 plus 9, so this is actually two sheets of sheet membrane adhered together with 8 plus 9. And I'm going to go ahead and peel these apart. Again, this is a 16 hour cure. And see how it's actually ripping. Um, the membrane apart I mean it's and it's fully cured so so the 8 plus 9 cures without air it can cure under two sheets of waterproof membrane I did the same thing with the hydroband cementitious and let's see how that see so that one just comes right apart it didn't stick to that side and it's still wet let's see if I can do this it's still crumbly and hasn't cured where the 8 plus 9 is fully cured it will not come apart and so what I did to further illustrate that is I took two Dixie cups when I mixed this up yesterday and I sealed them up with shrink wrap so they were completely sealed the Ardex 8 plus 9 is hard as a rock I mean it is it's hard and the Hydroban I can just crumble it. I mean, it's soft. So, in the absence of air, the Hydroband Cementitious, just like other waterproof membranes, 
just like Red Guard, just like Hydroban, the other ones that are used, they will not cure in the absence of air. So if you put them between two waterproof sheets, it's not going to cure and you're going to fill it up with water and it's going to leak. This Ardex 8 Plus 9 is solid as a rock. I mean, there's no, no way I could break this. I mean, it, it's cured as hard as it's going to get in the absence of air. So that's just a little side note. So I hope you learned something from this video. It's a lot of fun for me to do these tests and I encourage you to do this testing as well. Share your information with me and us and our community. Leave your comments in the section below. That's the way we're all gonna get better, make our industry better and understand these products and how they're used. I do not want you guys going out there and trying this stuff without it being tested. So I had a viewer who sent me an email. He said, I've been putting my Curdy together with red guard i've been putting red guard down putting the band over it and i just go oh no this is somebody who just doesn't understand how it works what happens it just stays liquid let's share information so this stuff doesn't start happening out there in the field and when in doubt just follow the manufacturer's recommendations i know i do things a little bit differently but i have tested them tested them, I've water tested them, I've done a lot of research, I talk to the manufacturers, I talk to people who know how these systems work, I've talked to technical departments to actually figure out the differences and how they cure and all of those different things. So if you don't know that, when in doubt, follow manufacturers recommendations. Uh, even with Curdy, if you were to build a Curdy shower without putting eight plus nine over it, you're probably gonna be fine. It adds insurance for me, and I know it's going to work. So anyways, leave your comments in the section below, guys, so we can all get better. Make sure to watch the next video coming up. And last but not least, I love you guys. I love being your tile coach. I'm having a lot of fun doing this. We'll see you on the next video.